Hello my friends, this is Jeannie. Welcome back. If you are a first time visitor, welcome and thank you. So in this video, I thought I would catch you up on where I am with my Wizard of Oz journal. If you have not seen the first video where I share what I plan on doing with these journals and where I also share the cover that I made for one of the journals, I will throw up a card for that video up here somewhere so that you can go check that out. I have been working on the cover, um, this cover in particular. If you will remember, this cover had like a little, um, uh, almost like a brand <laughs> circle up here that said, I think it was Folgers or some kind of, um, not so nice looking circle up here with some um some kind of branding in it and i wanted to cover it so i used some items from my stash to cover that up i used some um what do they call that appliques <laughs> i had some floral appliques some white and some pink i also had these vintage yo-yos that I purchased from Diane H. Her Etsy shop is Pretty Pink Cottage. And I also had these little um, floral appliques here. So basically I pulled everything together, made a little collage, so to speak, and put them together and covered up that um, mark up there that I just didn't like. And what I also did was I put, I punched the holes for my signatures and I put in some eyelets and I also punched a hole and put in a ring so that I have somewhere to hang my charms from. So that is what I have so far. Okay, I haven't done much else, but I'm pretty happy with the way that the journal is looking right now. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. And what I did with the vintage yo-yo is that I went in with some distress ink and just applied it directly on the yo-yo to get those those kind of like pink highlights there. So again, I'm happy, super happy with the way that turned out. And um, I'm already working on the dangle that I'm going to make for this journal for this journal i think i'm going to use this string of pearls that i have to create some type of dangle to hang from there that's where my thoughts are for that right now who knows that might change but i i think i i kind of like that pearl vibe to go with this very traditional kind of vintage um wizard of oz so that's the cover what I started doing today is stamping um, the stamps. I have been um, doing some prep work on the stamps that I'm using. I think I shared them in a prior video, but just in case I didn't, let me show them to you right now. So I have these Wizard of Oz stamps by Graphic 45. I have two sets of them. Let's see if I can pull them together. <laughs> right now they are scattered all over the place. But I do have two sets. Here's uh, the one set that has, let's do that, uh, the Scarecrow, the Lion, the Tin Man. We have the word Oz here and we have the Yellow Brick Road. And then the other set has... Um, the Magic of Oz sentiment here, the Wiz himself, um, Dorothy, her ruby red slippers, and Toto is hanging around right here on my stamping block because I was using him to do some stamping. And also one of those sets, I forget which, came with this sentiment that said there's no place like home. I think this came with the one that uh, was the Dorothy. So I have been stamping those on sheets of paper just um, to see how they stamp. I know these are missing their heads and that'll make sense in about a minute. But 
I stamp them on different types of papers and then after I stamp them just to see how detailed the images are because I had I, I think I stamped these maybe one time before and I don't remember how they stamped so I wanted to definitely get a feel for just how fine the details are and I'm very happy with that and then while I was looking at the images I got this idea to make some of these um, I don't know what you call these tags right these tags for me to hang in my album and the way I created these tags is I used I stamped all the images I used a circle punch a really small one I don't even know what the size of this is a super tiny one and then I had some of these metal rings and these are by Tim Holtz what I did is once I stamped the images, I backed them to each other back to back so that the image is double sided. I popped them into these rings. I ran the rings through my uh, die cutting machine to press them closed and I ended up with these really cute little um, tags for lack of a better words, these little hang tags that I am going to use throughout my journal. In some cases, I'll use them as dangles. In others, I will just um, stick them directly onto the page. So I was working on those and I thought I should turn the camera on and share that with you. So let me show you how I made those in case you're interested. So to make those, all you need are these um, metal rings. And I got these. I know these are by Tim Holtz. He has them in different sizes. He has like a, a small, a medium, and a large. I was hoping to make the larger ones, but I don't have um, a circle punch that punches paper um, that works for this. And I'm entirely too lazy to fussy cut. So I will have to... I'm sure I have a circle punch somewhere in my horde of stuff here in my room but I can't find it right now and I just want to do this right now I don't want to spend any time looking for a circle punch and so I decided to just work with what's on my desk this is what's on my desk which happened to fit the smallest of the rings so I'm gonna go with that so what I did was um, since I already stamped the images on different types of papers I went in and you can see what I did here you can see they're all missing their heads it's because I went in with my circle punch and punched out their cute little faces and I didn't feel bad about it because I can always stamp these again so I try to position them in a way where I get a pretty good portion of their face and I know who it is that um, I'm stamp I'm punching out so and that was the scarecrow here's the tin man the lion's a little tough because he is all <laughs> main there um, so I try to focus more on his face and I know this is probably upside down for you maybe I'll turn it a little bit there so I just try to get enough so that you can see the expression on his face. And then, of course, there is Dorothy right there. So we have Dorothy. So once I punched all of those out, and I already did Toto, so don't, don't think that I'm ignoring Toto. Here's Toto right here. Here's Toto right there. Um, then what I did was, let me move these plates to the side. I just back them to each other. Now the ones I just punched out on the um, off-white card stock, I'm going to do a little differently than the ones I punched out from this white card stock. So for this um, card stock that I just cut out, I don't know if the color's coming through, but it's an off-white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a double-sided tags so I'm going to take two of the images that I punched out and basically back them to each other before I load it into that little ring and I'm just going to use my ATG 
to put a, a, a tiny bit of adhesive on the back to keep the images from moving once I back them to each other. And it doesn't have to be exact. It's an approximation. That's about, that's, that's pretty good, right? Good enough. <laughs> and then um, I take one of these rings and just um, work the image into there. The image, um, it does fit. You just have to fuss with it a little bit and it'll slide in. Okay, so that's what it'll look like on both sides. And I'll do that for a couple of the images before I run them. And then maybe I could run them all through the machine at the same time. Now, I know Tim Holtz does have like a little hand press to close those rings up. And I actually have it. I do. And I was using it, but quite honestly, it doesn't work very well. This is the little hand press that um, you're supposed to slide this into and then press it together if you see the press in there. But either I'm like a total weakling and I, I can't put enough pressure to seal it or it's just not working right, but it wasn't working for me. I was getting frustrated. I was also hurting my wrist. So I decided to just um, use my die cutting machine. So I'll sandwich it between two plates and call it done. So there is the Tin Man. Let's do the Scarecrow. I hope everyone is having a fabulous weekend. As always, um, it's Sunday here in my craft room. That's usually when I get to get into my craft room and do some crafting. Uh, let's see, what did we do this weekend? This weekend, I had a planning session yesterday with my Girl Scout troop co-leaders. And we planned out the rest of the Girl Scout year for our troop in terms of events and community service. So I'm super excited about that. We have some fun trips coming up and um, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. My girls are now cadets and um, I know I feel like we just finished our bronze award and bridged to cadets but um, we seriously have to start thinking about our silver award so this year has been all about satisfying some of the preliminary requirements so that next year we can focus 100 percent on i think this i might have picked a small yeah this one's too small for that one so that this coming year we can focus 100 percent on um, their silver award so that's what I spent my weekend doing there's this there's the lion okay so let's why don't we run those four through and see how that goes and then move on from there so I'm going to use my cuddle bug and I'm going to line up all four of these. I'm gonna stack the uh, A plate, put the C plate on top of that, and then the B plate. On, my B plate is kinda, is, you know, it's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of use there. So she's, she's, she's worn. I'm gonna run that through my machine, hopefully. And I guess we'll find out together, right? That turned out okay. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, perfect. So now look at that. Perfectly flat, really cute. Look at that embellishment. That was the Tin Man. Here's the Lion. There's the Scarecrow. 
and there's Dorothy. So I need to make to make um, quite a few of those because I have two journals I'm working on. So um, the next set I'm going to make, it's going to be a little different. I thought what I would do for these is back some of the characters together so that you would have a different image on each side. So I thought I would put the Tin Man and the Scarecrow together, Dorothy and Toto together, and the Cowardly Lion and Dorothy together, why not? And then just have one that's Toto and Toto. Oh, I could, I could. No, I'll put them together. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. So let me get... I shouldn't overthink it. Don't overthink. Oh, here's one. <laughs> here's one I already actually backed together. So cool. That one's done. On the one side, I have Toto. And on the other side, I have Dorothy. So let's do another one. Let's do the Tin Man. Oh my gosh, these things are sticking. They're so flat. Tin Man. And... Scarecrow. So it is Super Bowl Sunday, and I don't really care for the Super Bowl. There, I said it. I don't know who's playing. I don't know what the deal is. So let me pour some more of these rings out. Um, my husband's, of course, totally into that. So good for him. I uh, made him some dip <laughs> earlier so that he will have something to snack on while he watches the game. But uh, that's my contribution to the game. I made dip. <laughs> um, I don't plan on watching the games. I don't plan on um, watching the commercials. I quite honestly, um, I don't care. <laughs> um, I thought I would, while he's preoccupied with the game, that I would just try to catch up with some work in my craft room. So he's watching what he loves. I'm doing what I love. Okay, so that's, oops. That's another one. Who's missing? Oh, we need to put Dorothy. Yeah, this one is a Toto and a Toto. Might as well stick him in a ring. Let's find a ring that fits. Really do wish I had the hope, the punch for the bigger one. I do have it, I do. And uh, the crazy thing is I used it recently which leads me to believe it's on my desk and it has to be it's not on my desk but it has to be somewhere around my desk here my craft room is not all that messy everything has a place so i checked the place it should be i checked the place where it belongs and it's not there which tells me that i used it recently and just didn't put it back which begs the question where did i put it um, I will admit my desk is a little bit messier than usual right now because I have um, a few projects going, but it's really not a small, I mean, it's small, but it's not teeny tiny. There's no reason why. And here I put Dorothy and the Cowardly Lion. There's no reason why it should be misplaced. So either it fell on the floor and it's hanging behind something or I don't know. I don't know. And it's driving me crazy. It's one of those things. But I decided to just move on, right? Just stick with the size that I have everything for and work with that. So 
the Dorothy is fitting in there pretty good. Just want to make sure. No Harry Potter on the TV tonight. <laughs> no, I usually watch um, a Harry Potter marathon on the weekends, but there's no Harry Potter marathon. There was one on yesterday. I watched it yesterday. Honestly, I have watched each movie, gosh, at least 25 if not 30 times. Um, but today what they do have on TV is a Breaking Bad marathon. So I like that show. I watched that entire series uh, before, so why not? So that's what's keeping me company in the background here. Okay, so I think we got all those in there. Yep. So we can line these up. Let's line these up again. Um, I have the A plate right there. Here is my C plate. And I am going to put them all right there. on my plate put my B plate on top of that run that through my cuddle bug so much easier than that hand press that hand press was a waste of money at least for me okay so oops and they look perfect so here is the scarecrow and the tin man on one side we have the lion dorothy on the other here we have toto and toto again toto and well toto again can you tell toto's my favorite he's so cute and then we have toto and dorothy so that is at least one of the embellishments that I am making for my journal. So to use these, as I said, what I'm going to do, I think, is just punch um, a little hole at the top of each of these and use some um, either hemp cording or just some kind of um, cording to create little dangles. I could also use a bulb pin and I might do that. Just so many different things I can do with this. I might also just um, attach them directly to the journals, but I have plenty. I'm happy. I'm using my stash. You can see the images really clearly, which is all a good thing. So there's an idea if you have some smaller stamp images and you invested in these um, tag and tag press by Tim Holtz, here's an idea of how you can use it. I am going to continue to work on my journal. I did want to, my goodness, I did, I did want to um, do some heat embossing, but these images, these stamps, the details are so fine that I, I feel and I'm a little afraid that if I try to do some heat embossing with them that the details are going to get lost or the images are going to look muddied. Um, I might experiment anyway to see how it looks. That's pretty much what I've been doing so far today. Let me share with you one experiment, which was, I think, a fail. I don't know. So I bought these red inks. This one is a pigment ink called Ruby Red, and it has some glitter in it. And I was really excited about that because I thought I can use that for the Ruby Red slippers. And then this other one called Tulip Red. And I stamped them. I don't care for the tulip red so much because I think it's a little more on the orange side than on the red side. So I think I'm going to pass on that for the journal. 
the um, pigment ink with the glitter is nice. It's nice, but I have to uh, get used to using it because it's very wet right now. It's the stamp pad itself is very juicy so the images are looking very blotchy I have to kind of work out the pressure on that so that I can get some clear images on it and these are the ruby slippers punched out in that same ink which they don't look they don't look too bad but I don't know I'm kind of on the fence about it I don't know if it's looking blotchy because of the ink or it's not blotchy at all and that's just the way the stamp is I don't know I think my eyes and my mind are playing games on me what do you think I don't know so I am going to continue experimenting I think also for these what I'm going to do is pull out some of those vintage slide mounts that I have and maybe what I can do is heat emboss the slide mounts yeah there's a thought okay I'll try that I'm gonna take my vintage slide mounts and heat emboss them uh, a pretty red and then mount these on those and I think that'll turn out super quick so maybe that'll be my next video I'm going to stop this one here and I'm gonna do that right now and film another video and yeah that's where I'm at if you have any questions about anything you've seen me here do here today uh, definitely leave a comment down below and I will uh, do my best to answer your questions. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, please do so. I would truly, truly appreciate that. And if you haven't already activated that bell, do that so that you get notification anytime I post a new video. So as always, my friends, thank you for dropping in, checking in, and keeping me company while <laughs> I play around here in my craft room. I truly do appreciate it, and I will catch you all in the next video. Until next time, bye-bye.